God has placed you in this season for such a time as this. I truly believe that God wants to use you. God has anointed you and He wants to make you a vessel that brings Him glory. I'm talking today with my friend, Pastor Marcel Muniz from Praise Chapel Pasadena. He went and answered the call of God to pastor a church at the age of 29. And I want you to hear this testimony. I want you to hear the word that the Lord has placed in his heart. And I want you to be encouraged to pursue all that God has for you. I want to emphasize God wants to use you. And we're talking about the call of God. Pastor Marcel Muniz, welcome to Encounter TV. Now I need to full disclosure here off the top. <laughs> Pastor Marcel is my brother-in-law, married my sister Raquel, <laughs> and is the father of to you. Danny J yeah. and Jammers is Jammers, what we call yeah. him. Is the great family, and so that's not why he's on the program. He's on the program because he's anointed, and he's Thanks, <laughs> he's gifted of God. And you know, I have some family members; they're not coming on, but uh, but but <laughs> you're funny. here because you're anointed. There's a call yeah, of God on you, for sure. so that's why you're here. And you have a, a a story to share. You have just a passion to do things for God. So that's what we're talking about—the call of God. And I yeah, want my viewers absolutely. to be encouraged to pursue that. So take us back there. Tell us a little bit about your family, yourself, and where you are right yeah, now. Absolutely, like you said. Uh, I'm married to a beautiful wife named, uh, her name is Rocky. Uh, she's, she's awesome. She's, she's my partner in crime for all of this, all the ministry that we do uh, through thick and thin. She's not here because she's like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of the house and you just go and do what you got to do. So I honestly, honestly wouldn't be able to do the call that, that God has called me to if it wasn't for her. Like, you know, she's just there backing me up on my side throughout the whole thing. And She's great. She's awesome. She makes it. She makes church easy, right? So if you're out, uh, if you're there trying to like find a wife, or, like find a good wife that's going to make church and call doing the call of God super easy. So uh, we've been married for for a good time, and she 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 was she's out there with me uh, in Pasadena. We we moved out there last May, and uh, we started the church. We started uh, the church plant in our home. It was probably about like five people. Now, what was that like? You so you you didn't start in a church building as some people would think to do, right? Yeah, you you worked with what you had. What was that like? You started Absolutely. in in your home. We started our home, and uh, we 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 got a great send off from our our, our sending church, uh, which is awesome. And they helped us get there. They helped move us out there. So we had support from the very beginning. But once we got there, we were on our own. I had to do worship. We had to get the slides. We had to do all these other things that like maybe some people up front wouldn't think a pastor should do. But you just gotta you just gotta make it happen, right? Um, did, doing all the outreaches and, and I remember being in the home like you said most people don't feel like uh, a church a home church is really a church but I, uh, it really is you know um, I remember we, we did an outreach we, we went out there and uh, we started passing out flyers and this one woman she actually showed up and she knocked on the door uh, and she knocked on the door and I opened the door and I'm like just as surprised as her like whoa like there's someone here somebody came yeah somebody came <laughs> Uh, and she was just like, uh, is this a church? Is I like, you have a church? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's totally a church. Trust me. But it was really weird because like, uh, in the very beginning, I could just tell she was a little apprehensive. She didn't want to come inside at first, but I like forced her inside, you know, and I strapped the, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. But, um, she came in, she, she loved it, but, uh, there's, it, it's there, there's a little awkwardness in the beginning, I guess, for this type of model, which is praise chapel. Uh, not everybody, um, is familiar with Praise Chapel, but Praise Chapel is the fellowship that we're part of. And really what we do is we we, we believe in people. Uh, we win them, we build them, and we send them. And, and a lot of times we, we send with as much support as possible, but they go out there sometimes by themselves, uh, uh, not alone, but we with their family to get integrated into the, the culture, into whatever city that they're going out to. And, and, and they just go for it. And that's exactly where we're at uh, right now. We were there in our home for um, about like four months from, from May, not four months, uh, from May to October. I'm bad at math, so I don't know how, how long that was. Um, <laughs> we were there from May to, to, to October and I just felt God putting in our heart, like, man, we're, we're, we're gonna outgrow this place. Like, um, and I remember like praying and, and, and just getting a sense of what God was doing there. And I remember telling my pastor, if we get like five more people, it's just five more people showed up, uh, we hung out with them on a Friday. That was a Friday. Remember, it was a Friday night. Uh, and I told them, five more people show up. We're going to have to move. And then uh, the next Sunday, five more people showed up. Five people straight up showed up. And I was like, wow, 
Like this is totally God. Like and 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 it's just been a series of, of God moving, God speaking uh, to us, and 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 just revealing Himself in different ways like that, which caused us to take the next step. But we went and we got another build. We got a building for the um, off of Colorado Boulevard. It's a great location. It's awesome, and um, it's 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 been really cool to have people come to that, which is a little, I guess, a step up from having home church. It's not so weird. You don't have to. Uh, people, people feel awkward with that. Kinda, yeah. And 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 I'm just so thankful thankful and blessed for the people that did go to the home church and 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 believed in it from the very beginning because that's just uh, to me um it just brings to mind uh blessed are those who believe who don't see like who don't see and still believe like they're believing in what God was doing even without the all the extras of the, uh, that come with just having like a church building right it's funny how the culture kind of switched on that because in the early church they met in people's homes quite regularly yeah but where we come from, and I, I don't talk about it, I don't feel like I talk about it often enough. We're both from Praise Chapel Christian yep. Fellowship. Now, this is a fellowship of churches. It's basically a church multiplication movement. And so it started with one church in Maywood, California, 1976. And that church planted several churches, and those churches plant churches. And, those, and so we're multiplying church churches, which yep. ch the church is the number one tool of evangelism. Absolutely. So you are from... So my pastor is Pastor Mark Lopez. Take it all the way back, yeah. So let's take it all the way back. <laughs> I, I go to a church in Paramount. Mm -hmm. My pastor is Pastor Omar Lopez, who sent Pastor Mike Perez Mike to Perez, Bell Gardens. To City of Bell Gardens. Who discipled you, yep. who then sent you to Pasadena. <laughs> so it just yeah, kind of all just, connects. it just keeps going. It just keeps going. And so talk to me about that, though, because I think one of the dying messages nowadays that you don't really hear anything about is this message of the call of God costing you something? This message right. of I know you kind of joked about you know the wife making it easier and you know <laughs> but but you've talked to me and we've had several conversations at my dad's house and yeah. even just me and you one on one about the call of God, discipleship and and the price to pay. You know Jesus paid the price for salvation, but we got to pay the price for the call. Yeah, talk to me Absolutely. about discipleship, where you came from, how how God started to form that in you. Talk yeah. to me about that. Honestly, I, I can for sure say that we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be as equipped that I am to be here in our church right now if it wasn't for the cost of discipleship that that I paid. I don't want to make myself seem like, oh, yeah, like, look at the stripes on my back. I'm like this this all-star. But, like, the, the the cost that we paid in being at Bell Gardens from the very beginning, um, it's it's kind of like a, ver a very similar story, it's, except that it wasn't a house that we started in Bell Gardens. It was a crummy warehouse. Like, so it wasn't a house, it was a crummy warehouse. And uh, I remember people coming and, and people saying, like, coming and leaving saying, man, this is a ghetto church, you know, and, and, and looking at it and kind of just despising the day of small beginnings and saying, like, man, what's going to come out of this? Like, there's no way anything can come out of this, you know? And I think the cost comes when, when, when you look at something like that and you dig roots anyways. And, and you, you pay the cost of not chasing after the big, the extravagant, and you're faithful to a small vision with purpose. And that, man, uh, putting, putting effort in, 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 uh, effort, uh, in investing financially, man, sometimes that can be, that, to me, I think that's a bigger cost when you're, when you're just taking care of something that hasn't even sprouted yet, and, and you're just tending to something like that. Versus, oh, when, you, when you're just connected to a super big ministry, which is great, you know, like if people find homes there, awesome. Let them flourish where they're planted, where God brings them. But like in a place like that, I felt like God allowed me to, to be able to connect to the ministry, connect to the heartbeat of, of not only my pastor, but what God is doing in that city. And, and to me, it's, it, I feel like it's more difficult when you don't see all the, the fruit up front, right? Hmm. And, and you don't have a, a, a thousand followers uh, just, just clamoring at how awesome your ministry is, how awesome, you know, like uh, 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 how you are and how great your preaching is. And, uh, and just dealing with the people that not too many people want to deal with. Um, I think to me that's 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 one of the costs that we that in praise chapel that we pay all the time. Um, and again, it's it can kind of sound sound like man we're the we're the martyrs, and I'm not trying to make it seem like that. Like we're 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 trying to elevate ourselves based on the cost that we pay. But I feel like when it comes down to discipleship, when it comes down to seeing God doing something huge, you've got to value the small. For sure, and 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 treat it like if it was the biggest thing on earth. And and to me, when we were there in Bell Gardens, I remember being there with like maybe five youth youth right now, um, in that 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 ministry, and and I'm talking about kids that are, that just 
They're, they're great kids now. Like, if you look at those kids now in our church, they're leading the worship team. One of the guys is the assistant pastors. Uh, you have them uh, the, the leading a young adult group that's just thriving. They have like 100 plus people. It's just amazing. It's it's fantastic. It's just awesome. I look back and it's like, man, I, I, I'm so pumped for these guys. And But the, what, I, what I look back and I'm like, a lot of people don't see the new people that are coming to that. They don't see the cost that was involved when all these kids didn't have cars. And I was the guy driving from... I lived in La Habra, driving to La Mirada to pick them up, to Bell Gardens to take them to church, pick up some people in Bell Gardens to take them to the church. And mind you, I'm dri- I had like an Acura Integra. <laughs> I remember that. Thing. And I was in college at this time, so I was the 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 broke, the typical broke college student. You know, like I remember some someone giving me five bucks for gas. I was like, thank you, God bless you, brother. And I went to Jack in a Box because like I had like no money, and like I put half to the <laughs> to the gas and the half I bought like two orders of tacos. Anyways, uh, so like I was there in 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 doing this work when like no one was patting my back, you know, and and there wasn't this incentive where like man, my ministry is awesome, my ministry is like flourishing, right? And I had all this buy-in that people want to be on my team. People, you know, like buying even from the top, like, man, your pastor saying, you're doing a great job, son. You know, like all that. And uh, I remember being there and just investing in these kids and, and helping them out and speaking to them. And and uh, even when they went to their teen, their, their they got out of their, their teen years and went to their adult, their like young adult stage when they didn't care about anything about church and all they, all they wanted to do was just find their babe. You know what I mean? And, and I remember like investing, just hanging on to them, pulling. I remember some of them like saying, I want to go, I want to go to the military. I'm like, bro, like you can't do that. You know, like you gotta, you got, not that you can't and then that's bad, but I'm like. In their case, it wasn't God. Yeah. And just helping them to see that, but there was no accolades, right? I'm not getting any like stars right now. Like even right now, I, again, as I said, the ministry is just flourishing, but nobody knows my name there as it should be. Or like, I'm not like, uh, you know, it's great that nobody knows my name. It's great that there's new guys taking over, but I find it, it's, it's the cost to pay for something when it's, when it's that young. That Why do you think so many people struggle with it? I mean, you're, you're describing here, and I, I love what you're describing, that you're just kind of in it to do the work, not all of these things that surround it. Why is it that so many people have trouble with the price that comes along with it or, or working with the small or valuing the small? Why, do, why in our culture today, why do people struggle to value the small? <sighs> I don't know. I, th- I, I think it's, um, I don't know if it's part of a, the millennial generation it has to do something like that, that we, with everything that we have so instant, instantaneously, like our, our, not only just the microwaves, which God bless, you know, I'm so thankful for the engineers who, who, <laughs> who didn't go to uh, pursue a, a ministry in, in uh, or a career in ministry, but actually we're engineers to create those things. I think God bless those guys. But like even just the, the accessibility of, of 4G networks and just like stuff that we get just like that. And then you kind of don't even have to pay for that stuff. It's just, it's just, you know, part of part of life. You have stuff that fast. And and for the millennial generation, um, maybe plus or minus five years from 30, like 35 to like 25, maybe even younger, that's, that's it kind of like translates to church. You know, like you, you, you want to be a part of something that's, that has value, that has impact, that, that you yourself are, are, are have satisfaction in your ministry, but it doesn't come quickly, you know? And I think another thing too is that um, what comes, I, I hate this, this term that I'm about to say, but paying your dues. I really hate that term. I do. Like, it, I've personally, like in my job work for LA County, like I've lost like promotions to other people because I haven't paid my dues right like right. I, and it's just like bro like i have so much experience you know that that you guys don't even know about like you don't even know how what like how to double click on on a mouse and you're <laughs> giving these promotions to all these people and so i get it and i and, and i vibe with millennials who who have a problem with that saying but i feel like on the flip side there's some truth to that because you can't really expect to change the system you can't expect to change or influence your church your small church, right? Your pastor maybe doesn't see the value in the lights, doesn't see the value in um, doing amazing stuff like this, doesn't see the value in having a young adult ministry or a youth ministry. And there's some, I, no lie, there's a lot of pushback. There's gonna be a lot of pushback in church. And, and that to me, and I understand that a lot of times people will be turned off by that. And they'll be turned off by 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 pushback and, and criticism in the church. Um, I, I totally get that. And, and, and there's a case for that. But I will say that uh, there, there, there has to be some vetting that you have to just get through that, man. 
I believe all change comes from the top. So unless you're willing to 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 be have an influence and and have, uh, um, I guess just as as Paul said about Timothy, man, like this guy is just vetted. This guy this guy has proven himself uh, over. Uh, over and over, you know, and, and he's he's standing for Timothy with these church people because he's like, man, you guys can't say anything about Timothy. He's proven himself, and and Titus, all these young men, because they've proven themselves. And I feel like it, there's value in proving yourself in ministry, paying the price, partnering with your pastor when it's small, you know, when when things aren't just awesome and amazing, when they don't serve your needs, right? And I feel like some that could be missed in, uh, with our generation, um, and, and and they don't. We don't pay that price, you know, and, and, and it's just like I want to make impact. I want my ministry to be as awesome as someone else's ministry that I see on Instagram. And, and, and just because you get a little pushback in it from your church, it's like, you know, whatever. They, they don't see the, the value that I have. They didn't look at my resume, you know, and they just, man, they have no idea what they're missing out on. And I, I, I totally understand that. But at the same time, I feel like throughout the scripture, you know, we see people value, uh, valuing the ministry and, and getting vetted and, and proving themselves. So value the small. Yes. Pay your dues. <laughs> Those are two great points. Give me one more, just, just as far as things that you're learning on your journey of pioneering this church. That could, because you, you didn't, here's one of the things I wanted to point out. You said earlier, you didn't just go, you were sent. Yeah. You, you served under a pastor for how many years? I was there for like 10 11 years. 10, 11 years before you were finally released to pastor church. Yeah. That, that's missing nowadays. People don't want, they, they say, I don't want to be under a system. God's not controlling. Oh, yeah. That's an oh, ugly yeah. spirit. That's Absolutely. an ugly spirit. And so that's one of the things I've always respected about you is that you're willing to serve. And so tell me now, okay. where is your church? Um, it's, it's in Pasadena, it's California. Pasadena. So, right off of Colorado Boulevard. Um, and we're actually looking to go to the next level. I mean, to me, I, uh, I think it's just phenomenal what God's doing. I, from what I've heard, we work with all the a lot of other church plants out of Praise Chapel, and we I, I'm hearing stuff that like, man, uh, where we're at, it's 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 like a miracle. Like some people don't get out of their homes for like four years. I'm just like, wow. And not only did we get out of our house and we got into this 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 building that we're at, but where God's leading us, He's leading us to go even bigger than that. And to me, I'm, every step of the way, I'm just blown away at what God's doing. Not only in in like I guess the the momentum of the church, but the people in the church. They're they're just blowing me away that that they're connecting to the vision about what God is doing in the city. That that they're understanding that they've been blessed for a purpose. That what what God brings them financially, what God brings them in in their their special skills and abilities as 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 their own, in their own char- characteristics. That they're they're not just using it for their own good, their own benefit. They're saying, I want to invest that into the church. We're in a series right now called Be the Church. And, and, and what it's talking about is, is not just using God's blessing and going to the church just so I can hear a good word and, you know, like, oh, man, put that on Instagram. You know, like tweet a, a, a memorable statement that the pastor said, but saying, like, man, God's giving me this. Not only so I can go to church, but also be the church and use the, the things that God has given me for a purpose. And, and it's just wonderful to see that people are connecting to that vision. Uh, we just had a meeting um, with these guys that are just social me- social media managers. Uh, another guy, he's, he's on board. He's like a, he's trying to intern for that stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm so thankful that these guys are, are, are just willingly just connecting to this um, and just, just understanding the vision from the very beginning. It's just wonderful. And, and, I, and it would be, I guess, uh, even more wonderful if, <laughs> Tell them. If, if, if anybody, you know anybody in Pasadena that would love to be a part of a church plant and really just learn to, uh, to, to, to know what it means to pay the price and, 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 and of discipleship, of, of, of investing into something that's small. Man, uh, uh, let me tell you, God's doing something wonderful, and I would love to have you a part of the church uh, and whatever giftings that God has blessed you with. Let me tell you, I, I do worship. I'm not good at it. Uh, I play acoustic. I drop my pick inside the guitar like all the time, you guys, and I drop it and, <laughs> all the time. And I'm telling you, like, there's there's so much opportunity that that, that God has for, for people, believers. Maybe you know somebody that wants to get connected in Pasadena. We would love to have them come out. And, and I believe— What are the cities around there? There's there's Altadena. There's, uh, there's Arcadia. There's uh, San Gabriel. 
San Marino, South Pasadena, um, any of the area uh, by the foothills, we would love to have you guys come by. Uh, uh, the 210, we're extremely close to the 210, maybe like a minute away from the 210. We have service on Sundays at 10 a.m. And we're looking to kick off uh, a, a connect group, a house group during the week. So we're looking for, for anybody that would that would be interested in partnering with us and, and just believing God. Uh, uh, I believe, I'm a, I'm a pastor that believes in persuasion, not in coercion. I'm not gonna try to coerce you and make you feel bad and like guilt trip you into doing something. You know, I, I'm a pastor that believes in, in just preaching the word and, and, and just believing that the Holy Ghost will, will encourage you, convict you to get into action. You're looking for a church where you wanna grow and, and I don't always do this. You guys know me. I don't always do this with other ministries. I had Ben Lim on a couple weeks ago, and I'm starting to have other ministries on, as I promised you I would. But, you know, I only bring people on here who I have no reservations about. I, without reservation or hesitation, I can recommend this church, not only for you to get down there and, and be a part of You're looking for a church, and you're in the area, get to that church. You know someone, get them to that church. This is a place where you can fulfill the call of God on your life. This is a place where God can use you. And like you said, you're in small stages. Don't despise the small, but you're also thinking big. Yeah, absolutely. You got big absolutely. plans and connect with that church. Um, Marcel, why don't we real quickly, just about a few seconds here, look right at that camera, encourage them real quick and pray with them that God would stir their heart for the call. Amen. Lord, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name for the opportunity just to um, be on this 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 platform and just just minister your word and just invite people to answer the call. If there's anybody uh, hearing this right now and, and they're in the area, I pray, Father God, that you would just minister to them and, and just uh, if that's you, for them to come come over, Lord God, and, and be a part of what you're doing, Jesus. I, man, I, I I I fully welcome it, and I just I, I I just confirm it right now that you've been thinking about going to church, you've been looking. To, to go to a church, and I just declare over your life that this would be it. In Jesus', Jesus name. name, amen. Well, this is an introduction. I know we didn't get, we, we, that went by quick. Yeah, it did. Uh, we, this is just a quick introduction. Marcel, Pastor Marcel will be back on and we'll get into teaching and scripture. Yeah. And you have a ton of it. Absolutely. But I feel this was just a good introduction for you to get to know his ministry and get to the church if you can. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor right, Marcel. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. For joining me. Well, that is it for this edition of Encounter TV Interviews. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.